tell you what, I got a hug from a blonde this morning. She was only about this tall. <laughs> but it was wonderful. It's good to be in God's house with God's people. It's good to be able to fellowship. It's good to have my good friend Kendall Weeks with us this morning. Uh, God's got a blessing for each and every one of us. Have you ever, when, you, when we sing a song, did you, ever, did you just sing the song or do you listen to the message in the song? The message. I almost got missed you this week when I was looking at Solomon. There are some wonderful messages in the Solomon that we sing. Uh, Brother Jane Ross, would you leave some prayer and open some at point? The Lord just come for you, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity that we have to get together today to worship. The Lord just has to be with us as we go into this psalm service. The Lord, let us just get a blessing from from the songs that we sing. The Lord, just let those songs get us ready for the sermon that we know that we want to receive. The Lord, just be with each and every one here. All of us have a worshipful spirit with us today to take away from here what you have for us. We'll just ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Grab a oh, big yeah. hymn and turn to hymn number 447. <coughs> Yeah. This side always. Anyway. 
Anyway, it is good to see each and every one of y'all this morning. There you go. <laughs> but it is good to see y'all. Y'all are so good to have visitors. Everybody that's uh, visiting with us this morning, we want to invite you to come back every opportunity you get. If you get a chance to get here at 945, we'd love to have you for our Sunday school program. Uh, every Sunday morning at 945, that's when our Sunday school programs kick off. And uh, it's really a, a blessing to be at Sunday school. It really is. Got just a few announcements this morning. Uh, before I forget, because it's not wrote down, as I said last Sunday, my wife reminds me this morning, for Veterans Day, if you have any loved ones that were involved with uh, D-Day and Normandy time during World War II, give her the name, uh, because uh, you know, it's the 80th anniversary, and uh, we're going to kind of, I guess, have their names in the bulletin uh, for the uh, <coughs> Veterans Day celebration that we have every year. So if you have, it, have a name that you want to give to her about Normandy invasion, just give it to kind. Also, no children's church today. Knox is still sick, and uh, Haley's not going to be able to be here, so y'all can prayer for Knox. This morning, we're going to be taking up a love offering from uh, Miss Sarah Godwin. So y'all keep Sarah and her daughter in your prayers. Uh, her name is Stephanie. She had a motorcycle accident, and uh, so y'all keep Stephanie in your prayers. But we will take up a love offering. Go ahead. If you write a check, make sure you write it to Sarah Godwin. Did y'all hear that? If you write a check, make sure you write it out to Sarah Godwin. And uh, Brother James, I'm assuming will be back there at the door and uh, take up the collection this morning on our way out. Our study in Matthew is continuing uh, today at uh, 5 o'clock at our evening service. We're in chapter 3. Uh, last week, uh, when our Gideon was here, uh, we presented him with $4,914.59. It was taken up through our fishbowl. Uh, offering and our vacation Bible school. So, as Brother Gary said last week, you know, a dollar a week. You know, bring a dollar and put it in there. That amounts to $52. Put it $52. $52. Uh, you'd be surprised how quick it mounts up. Or any change. If you got a $100 bill, you don't need it. You bring that to me. No, put it in the fishbowl. But anyway, uh, what you have, it, it goes to a good cause. I believe Brother Jim said this morning, I don't know if you need the exact number, it's going to buy over 4,000 Bibles that's going to be passed out. Randy told me that that would buy about 2,800 Bibles. Okay, 2,800. Me and, me and Jim went to the same school. We didn't figure out what Oh, they, they called up. Okay, well still, hey, that's putting God's word in 2,800 people that haven't got it before. And you don't think there's inflation? The Bibles went from about a dollar it went up 50% about a dollar and a half now. Oh, well. That's what it does. Well, but anyhow, it's getting God's word out there, and that's the main thing. Uh, we do have a business meeting today after our evening service. Uh, I understand to be part of our business uh, of the church, the business side of the church. Circus is coming to Texas County August 26th at 6.30 p.m. I believe they've been passing out free child passes in the foyer back there. Fifth Sunday second, coming up September 29th. Sign up sheet back there in the foyer as you come in. If you want to, uh, uh, got a song you want to sing or instruments you want to play or uh, whatever, just to sign up on that you know, sheet back here and we'll see that you get get to uh, do what you want to do on that part. We don't, all, we don't want our singers to get dementia, so they need to remember to sign the sheet. <laughs> you know what? That's three times. You're out. I'll go get it. I got, I got mine. <laughs> but y'all heard, y'all heard, sign the sheet. But we will be having a fellowship after the morning service. We will have a morning service like we always do. We'll have a fellowship. We'll go back and uh, enjoy a good fine meal. And we'll come back here and have a singing. And uh, we will not have an evening service on you know, September 29th. Uh, we start a new youth group. It's going to uh, start September 1st. Bring the kids. Uh, the name of it, Brother Randy's got, is called Rise. And last week, or it may be in there this week, I honestly haven't looked at the whole bulletin. Uh, there was a little fold out in there last week that told you something about the uh, what the study they're going to be doing. Johnny, what age is Was it four? Four, four to twelve. Four to twelve. <coughs> children. I mean, it's, that age group there. We got more of them than we do. They got number six and one. <laughs> but hey, Brian. Bring the, all the kids, but we'll start another one. Don't let, don't, don't let that hit the the teenagers. We'll, we'll start with the teenagers, too. Christmas shoebox items needed for all. Play-Doh, bandanas, small toys, flip-flops for boys and girls. Any other announcements? 
I'd just like to remind people, Randy asked for help. He oh, very much right. involved in this with him, and so he's going to need some help back there on Sunday night. So we get some volunteers. So if you want to help teaching these kiddos about our Lord and Savior, get with Randy, help him. Like I say, he'll need some help. I mean, you know, four year olds up to 12, I'd be like herding cats. We're going to be in the evening service. Yeah, yeah they from five to six. Any other now? All right, prayer request. Pam Steger. You just say Steger? S T E G E. Brian Ryerson, G R I E R S O N. He's my little cousin. He's 55 years old and he's severely uh, mentally handicapped. He's about like a 10 or 12 year old. He fell off the top of the fence, broke his neck Thursday evening. He's in surgery right now. And his older brother, which is my boss, has, it's only been them two all their life. He's been his caretaker, protector, provider. And he feels terrible and guilty. I didn't even know. I saw them together Thursday morning, and this happened Thursday evening. And I first found out about this morning he called. And he just shook up over. He's got a load of anxiety on him right now. They, they need a touch, a miracle touch from God. So I, I'm not studying Sunday school also. I saw on Facebook and I shared it. Uh, I don't know the child's name, but she was two years old and her mother ran over her with a lawnmower. Mm -hmm. And they had to the airlift her. She's not doing very well. <laughs> No, I didn't get her name. Jessie Parker's wife had, had a baby the other day, and she had a really rough labor, and the baby, I think they did CPR on her baby. I, I don't know. That's uh, Bo Parker and Stephanie Parker. Uh, Knockdown family. Knockdown family, just in general, several different ones have got different health issues going on right now. I, I did speak with Brittany this morning, and the baby is breathing on her own and doing much better. And her name is Ellie Grace Parker. And that's Bo and Stephanie's granddaughter, Newman. And also uh, Kevin Leverett's family. Kevin who? Kevin Leverett. He passed away Friday in his house. <coughs> Patricia Fadilla, she's a friend of mine, she's going to have shoulder replacement surgery Thursday. Brother Jim Boss, would you let me speak a little prayer, please? Need a prayer. 
we as a church believe that prayer works, we sing it for Amen. So be sure and mention these in your prayers and overlook the God for whatever they need in their lives. I got frogs this morning. We have, we have a big frog fry after church if I can get them all up. Okay, hymn number 540. <laughs>
service. Lord, I thank you for all the ones who pray and pray for these who have asked for prayer. I pray that you just continue to put a burden on our hearts to pray for those that, that uh, need your hand. I pray now that you bless the offering, bless the gift, and the giver be used with honor and by glory. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> that's a Christian, this is what they want people to see in them. Jesus in me. Jesus is living in me.
He don't humble himself to me and you. We are to humble ourselves to him. Amen. Amen. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If you are like that, you will fall in the presence of God. You will fall in the world because God is not blessing your work with that attitude. Amen. We have to learn that we are sheep. We're sheep. We're, we're pretty much defenseless. But we have a Savior that will defend us and he's already done it with his own life. Amen. And he will defend us and continue that. That ain't got nothing to do with this message, I don't think today, but it might. Our walk and confession. First John chapter one, verse thirteen. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested. And we've seen it. We have seen it. And we bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was the Father, which with the Father was, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message that you have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for revealing great truth to us today. Thank you for using the Apostle John to do this. And I thank you, Lord, that today your word is alive and well, and it is still absolute truth and we must live for you your way if we are to please you so god help us to hear these words today help us lord not to be confused by so many voices and so many different teachings that come our way help us lord to know that you're god and in order for us to go to you we must come only through jesus and the word help us to see that today in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I probably preached this message. Matter of fact, when I first started preaching, I started preaching out of the book of 1 John. And I didn't go back and look at any of my notes or my past uh, sermons. So when I, I actually started to preach out of chapter 2, and, and I was going to give a prelude to chapter 1 so you could understand more about what chapter 2 was was about and as I began to write down the prelude I thought oh I gotta preach this so God has an order he gave us chapter 1 then chapter 2 so we need to understand when we study a book of the Bible we need to realize that uh, it, it's all connected amen you can't just pick and choose what you want to believe what you this and that it, it just don't work that way you have to believe every bit of it or you don't believe any of it at all. Amen? Amen. And, and there's so many people that want to pick out what they want to believe and ignore what they don't want to face. Right. Right. And so we have to learn to not ignore anything in the Bible. We must face the facts of the Bible and we must adjust our lives and our thinking and our ways to that word. Amen? Amen. That's the way it works. 
And we don't get to change that. We have to resist the, 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 the temptation to do that. And we all are guilty of doing that very thing. Amen. Amen. Oh, we got quiet. That was a, that was bad. Amen. 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 We, we, we need to realize, God, that, uh, 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 folks, that we're all tempted sometimes to say, well, that just ain't really what it means. You know what? It is. It says what it means. And it means what it says. Right. And it really does mean that we might not have done right in his eyes. Right. So get get used to that. So 1 John is one of these amazing letters that are written by the Apostle John. And he and let me give you just a little bit of his background. The disciple that Jesus loved, according to the book of St. John, the only one that died a natural death, the only one that stood with Mary at the cross as Jesus was crucified, the, the one Jesus entrusted his mother to at his death, the one who wrote the last gospel, the, uh, uh, the, uh, these letters that we're uh, preaching out of now, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. He wrote every bit of that. And, and boy, wow. <laughs> Think about that. We just got through doing a study of Revelation. It was a wow study. Amen? Amen. John wrote that. John was uh, able to see all of these things. And so, what a resume he would have if he if he was to write a resume. He is the relationship disciple. That's why I tell people when you get saved, read the book of St. John. It's all about the relationship. And then go right on in and read 1 John. It's all about relationship, and it's about our walk with Jesus Christ. Read those books, and it will help you understand. He got that information because he's the only one that did, did he kill young. And he learned something in his old age. He was an old man when he, was, he wrote Revelation. He learned something. Without Jesus, I can't do nothing. Without the, the Holy Spirit in me, I am nothing. Without the power of God in me, I cannot live for Him. And he wanted to express that in his gospel, that we need the Comforter. We need the Holy Ghost that the Jesus talked about that would come and He would dwell in us and He would empower us. He would bring understanding. He would bring wisdom. He would bring all of that to us. And we need to know that. If you ain't never asked Jesus to fill you with the Spirit, you might ought to do that. Amen. You might not be saved without it. I know you're not. Right. Scripture tells us that. Uh, and so the so called the scripture said that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. If you got no spirit, you can't be led by it. You can't be led by what you don't have. So always in your prayers, you ask him. I, I, I tell you, I do this a lot. I pray, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Give me more. What's wrong with that? You know, sometimes we think we're so holy we don't need any more. Woo, that's when you better pray for more. Amen. Amen. You really need more now. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, uh, so this is who John was. This is the type of the stuff that he wrote. He is the relationship disciple. He teaches us more about the Holy Ghost and, and, and what that means because he knew that without Christ's Spirit dwelling us, we have no power and we're not saved. So in chapter 1 and verse 1, he, he declares this right here to us. And, and, and he tells us, he said, you know, I'm not just telling you that. I preach this stuff. I'm having to repeat what John said. John wrote this stuff because he had lived what he wrote. Right. Now think about that. And Jesus knew that when he went away, when he ascended, there wouldn't be anybody else to lay eyes on him again. And he, taught, he, he made a remark that blessed are you because you have seen. He was talking to Thomas. But blessed are those who will come at you that will not see, but will believe. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Amen. Faith is what it takes to please God. Faith is what it takes to receive God. Faith is what it takes to keep walking with God. Amen. And we must increase that faith. That faith, as we get older, you say, well, Lord, I tell you what, these people that's been saved 50 years amaze me with their knowledge. You know what that is? They have walked with Jesus Christ 50 years and they've been up there on the mountain and down in the valley and they know how He is and what He does. And that's why you, you look at them with great respect. That's, that's how God works in our lives. So He said, I have seen. Man, they, don't you know that was a part of blessing that had to be as He wrote this? Can you imagine where his mind was going as he wrote this? I have seen, I have heard, I have actually touched the eternal Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? The Bible tells one time that he had his head laying in the bosom of Christ. He heard the heartbeat of God. Amen. 
Amen. This man, not, he's not just anybody. This man is special. He is used to God, empowered of God. And his job is to make converts out of lost people and then tell them how to live for Jesus Christ. And he was Amen. sincere about that. Wow. He said, I touch the eternal one. And he don't call him Jesus. Look what he calls him. In verse 1, he said, the word of life. Yeah. Now why does he keep that in John chapter, uh, St. John chapter 1, he says the word became flesh. Why does he keep doing that? Because he knows that if we're going to walk this walk with the Lord, the word of God is how we're going to have to know how to walk. Amen. And you know what? We need to turn the TV off. We need to turn the radio off. We need to turn the computers off and get the Word of God and read it so we'll know how to walk. And quit listening to liars that get out there and tell you, oh, you ain't got to do this, you ain't got to do this, you, you can do this, you're okay. And they don't have a clue that the Word says otherwise. Amen. So you have to study the Word. That's why the Bible tells us to study the Word of God, to show yourself approved unto man. No, unto God. You study to show yourself approved unto God. You don't supposed to care what man thinks. That's what brought these lying preachers to us to start with. They're more concerned about what you think than God thinks. They're more concerned about filling this side of the church than they are telling the truth of the ones that are here. Amen. Amen. I my notes, by the way. <laughs> he touched Jesus. Listen to this. He ate with Jesus. Not only did he eat with Jesus, he ate Jesus with Jesus after Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. Think about that. Hallelujah. Jesus cooked him a meal after he was resurrected. Think about these things. And he wanted, he watched Jesus ascend into glory. Wonder what that felt like. Woo, you know what? We're not going to never, never get to see Jesus ascend into glory. But we're going to get to see ourselves a sin if we're saved. They're going to be a shout to me that we're going to leave this place. And, you know, somebody told me one time the Bible said we ain't going to fly. Well, how in the world are we going to get up the clouds? How are you going to get there? Get your boat and... You're going to be changed. And gravity is going to lose its hold on you. This Gravity is going to be the last thing that loses its hold on you in this world that the law of physics will be denied and you will lift off amen praise god hallelujah that's what the lord brings to us so the message of john when he tells these things he says i want you to know these things i'm not writing these things to brag to you we don't never need to brag on our relationship with god we need to brag on the god of our relationship amen. We're blessed to even be a part of it. John knew that he was blessed to be called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was blessed to walk with him. He was blessed to even to see him crucified because the blessing of the crucifixion was the resurrection that came after. He saw him die. And what did it do for John? It blew his mind. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then he went and received the gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. And he understood now everything that he had witnessed and everything that the Lord had said to him was brought to his mind. Why? To share it with me and you. That's the Word of God. That's how this works. And he said, I do these things. He looked at what he said in verse 4. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Let me ask you this. Do you really experience joy in salvation? Do you really experience joy in your walk with the Lord? Do you experience joy in the church? Yes, amen. We need to be better at coming than joy. You know why kids don't know anything about the Lord? People ain't bring them to church. They can't walk. They can't, they can't bring themselves. We need to bring our children to church. Hey, you know what? Sunday school back here this one. I'm going to fuss now. Was almost bare. What? We're fussing about having Sunday school? God help us. I didn't mean to go there. I'm sorry. Because we're going to be talking about our joy being full. And as soon as he makes this remark, he says this in verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him 
And we declare it unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. Now listen, we got to walk in that light. We have to be that light. We are, as long as Jesus Christ lives in us, we are to show forth from us the one who lives in us is to be expressed outwardly. People need to see you and they can look at you. You might don't even have to say a word and they say, there's something glowing on that fella. There's something glowing on that girl right there. Why are they so happy? And it opens the door to, to you to say, I have the joy of Jesus Christ in my life. He has come into my heart. He has changed me. And he wants to do that for you too. You want some of this? Call on his name. And you'll get it. That's the way to witness. And so he says, if he says, he said, we, he is light, and in him is no darkness. In Revelation, we learn that the New Jerusalem had no need of the sun. You know why? Because the Bible says that he is the light thereof. And in him, his light, the Old Testament proclaims, there is no shadow of turning. He is an encompassing light. So the light of Jesus Christ that dwells in us is an all-encompassing light. It, su it surrounds us inside, and it is supposed to surround us outside. Amen. Amen. Yes. And he equates this light that we're walking in this light. That means when you leave the church house, don't mean you get out of the light. Right. Right. Uh oh. And a lot of people live for God good at the church, but not so good away from the church. And he says this light don't leave you. This light stays with you. You're to stay in this light. If you walk out of this light and change it the way the Lord wants you to live, it begins to bring darkness into your own life. Now I want you to listen to me. I'm preaching to you right now. And so he goes on, he said, if we say that we have fellowship with him, in verse 6, and we walk in darkness, what does that mean? We lie. Boy, he's blunt, isn't he? <laughs> he's blunt. A lot of people talk to their kids, don't call anybody a liar. Well, the scripture does. Right. And he's talking about people who claim to be in the light but walk in darkness. He said, you're a liar. Right. There ain't no such thing as a Christian person saved by Jesus Christ filled with the Holy Spirit that's got the light of God in him. It's no such thing as one that does that and walks in darkness. Right. Now what does that mean, walking in darkness? It means that you have left the way of God and you're walking in the world. And you're more worried about the world than you are the Lord. That ain't putting Him first in your life. That's right. And He requires that of us. He said that's the first and greatest commandment. Amen? Amen? That He is our God. That we proclaim Him as our God. And we are to put nothing ahead of Him, right. even our own desires. Amen. Think about this. So He said... If you say that you have fellowship with God and you walk in darkness, you're a liar and you don't know the truth. Amen. Where do you find truth? In the Word of God. That's where you find it. It's absolute. And y'all, that's why they have tried for years and years to destroy the Word of God. And they're not burning the Bibles in the street. They're rewriting them. That's right. I heard a a preacher read a quote out of one the other day. I didn't have a clue what he said. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. I'd never heard that scripture before. Okay. It was changed. Mm -hmm. God help us. We don't have that authority. Right. Right. Praise God. And then he continues. And then he makes this remark. He, he talks about the one that says, I have fellowship with God. And you know, we, 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 we tease about that. There are a lot of people who say, I'm a Christian who are not Christian people. Amen. We don't get to judge them, and I'm glad. I never deny when a person tells me they're saying, I don't know you're not. I see the way you act. I'm tempted to say that sometimes, but I don't. But I'm going to tell you one who does know. God knows. And I'm going to tell you another thing. He told us, Jesus himself said, there's going to be people standing in front of me one of these days, and they're going to cry. And he said, there's going to be people who said, I have called on them, Lord. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, everybody that said, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of God. He taught that. He preached that. That's part of the word. That's part of the truth. Why? Because they said they did, but they walked in darkness. And you know what that put them? In hell. 
Amen. Yep. Now people tell me, oh, you're an old time preacher. You better believe it. Amen. Amen. I got an old time gospel right here. Amen. We've been a long time before the theologians and all the seminaries came about. Amen. And this gospel here was preached to people and that's why we have churches all over the world today because what they preach is the truth and it works. Amen. And what with this mud, mud, mud that we hear today is not working, oh, it makes you feel good. Right. But feeling good ain't the joy of the Lord. Right. It makes you feel good. It sounds good. It makes you feel like, okay, I can leave the church and I can go back to what I do. And it's, oh, God's good with that. No, he's not. Yeah. He said, I want you to walk in the light. When you walk out of the church, walk into the light. Yeah. Walk in the light of me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So he says, but, <laughs> verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You know what breaks our fellowship in the church? Darkness. <laughs> you can call it any excuse you want to. Oh, I don't agree with this. No, I don't agree with that. Oh, I don't believe this. Oh, if that didn't listen to me, blah, blah, blah. You can call it anything you want to. But if we walk in the light, that fellowship don't, it shows up in the church. But in other words, the Bible says you can disagree without being disagreeable. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, some people can't handle that. Right. They want to continue on for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. God help them people. Amen. They need to do what the scripture is fixing to tell them to do. Uh -huh. They need to find a place in an altar and call upon the name of the Lord and confess that sin before Him so they can have fellowship with everybody. Amen. We don't get to pick and choose who we have fellowship with. God does that for us. God don't, we, we don't add nobody to the church. He does. Right. And he does it the way he sees fit. And everything we gain is from him. Everything at the church, if we got more money, it's because God gave the increase. If we got more people, it's because God gave the increase. If we had the revival, it's because God brought revival. Nothing Amen. we did. Amen. Amen. And we need to learn that from the word of God. He gives all the praise and all the glory for everything. Amen. In our lives. Yes. Amen. And when things don't go right, we got tendency just to blame him. No, you don't love me no more. No, you went out of the light and went into darkness. Uh -huh. Amen. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all of our sins. That's why when our fellowship is broken, we run to the Lord. You know what most people do? They run from God right. when this happens. Yeah. I've I got this example. I know i got to hurry up. we got a little grandson. Is Tom Tom in here? Okay. He ain't talking to me yet. We're working on it. But when he gets ready to not say I need a body, he will find a place to hide. <laughs> and when he goes into the washroom and runs Granny crazy, he goes in the washroom, he's going in there for a specific purpose. <laughs> and that's to dirty that diaper. And when he comes out, everybody's there. He just grinning. <laughs> Because somebody picked him up. <laughs> <laughs> now listen to me. That, that, that sounds funny and it sounds gross, don't it? <clears throat> That's the way we do our sin. Amen. We go off and we hide from God uh -huh. to do our sin and think for some strange reason He can't see me. Uh -huh. God help us. God help us. Yes, he sees you. And so he says, I furnished the blood of my son. That precious blood. You don't have to live in a dirty diaper. Because the longer you wear it, the worse you stink. And if you keep wearing it, it causes problems and it causes rashes and infections. The longer you wear it, the worse it is. It's a relationship with God we're talking about. The longer you carry the sin, the more you stink before God. The more He can't use you. And the more He's waiting on you to 
call on his name so we can restore fellowship between you and him. Think about this. Yeah. That's why Jesus used parables. He never used one about dirty diapers. So you can say that's my parable. And he said, I give you my blood to cleanse you. And look, in verse 8, these, I hear people all the time say, when you get saved, you can't sin. And they use the excuse that we are justified, Brother Sam, and the Lord. But what they call justification is for, for past, present, and future sin. They group it all together. Amen? Well, here's the thing about justification. The sin you sin after you are saved does not make you lose your salvation. Right. It makes you lose fellowship. That's right. And you are a miserable person. Yep. And guess what? You will backslide. You'll quit going to church. You'll quit having anything to do with church people. You will, When you see them in the aisle at Walmart, you'll turn and go the other way because you don't want to face them. Yep. Right. That's what sin does for us. Yep. Well, you know why? Because they're light and we're dark. Right. And we're afraid if we get too close to them, that light will come and show us our darkness. <laughs> Well, the thing about God, He already sees you in your darkness. Amen. And He wants His light in there. That's part of obedience. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let me read you some scriptures. This is from Romans 3 and 25. Whom, talking about Jesus, God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. Now listen to this, that are past. You're past it. When, when you, when we baptize the old man, new man. When Jesus saves us, the old man dies. Past sins erased. Covered under the blood. Cast away from you forever. Amen? Or these did from the west, the Bible declares. And we are not accountable anymore for those past sins. Now the consequences of that sin may linger, but not with God. He's forgiven you that. Amen. So you come up a new man. Is that the end of it? No. Now we've got to walk in the light. We come up in the light, and we've got to walk in the light now. Amen. And so when, when this happens, Second Peter is another one. First you can turn back a couple of pages if you want to. First Peter chapter uh, 1 verse 9. And let's look at this. Uh, Peter says this. He said, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Now what are the things that he's talking about that we hadn't gotten that causes that? I'm going to show them to you real quickly. In 1 Peter chapter 1 or chapter uh, chapter 1. Look in verse 3. According as his divine power has given to us all things, now listen to this, that pertain unto life. Now he's telling us, he's given us all things that pertain unto life in him. Are you listening? And, uh, and, and uh, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now look at this. Whereby we are given unto us exceeding great promise and that, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world for lust. And beside this, now listen, he starts telling us a step-by-step-by-step by step by step thing that we must have to continue walking in the light. And beside this, giving all diligence, that means trying as hard as you can, by the way, and, and to uh, add to your faith what? virtue. So you have to add something to your faith. And it, is that all of it? No. And he said then to virtue add what? Knowledge. knowledge. You don't, you're, you're not born of God and instantly know the knowledge of God. That's why we call the new Christian a baby in Christ. If you're 90 years old and you get saved, Sister Patsy was 71 years, 71 when she got saved. She was a baby in Christ. Mm -hmm. so she, had to, that she got saved by faith but she had to add virtue and then knowledge. Amen? So you have to add these things. And it said, and, knowledge, and to knowledge add temperance. Uh, Y'all see that one, don't you? <laughs> we all learn to control ourselves. Now listen to me. Most of these things are given as the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit gives us these things. And to temperance, patience. 
I'm, I'm still, that's where I'll stop. Uh, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. And then he goes on to say that if these things are in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren. In other words, you're going to be fruitful. You're going to produce more Christians because you're going to be a witness to them and you're going to help people find Jesus Christ. That's what our work is. And, and uh, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know why you're unfruitful in knowledge? Because you don't study the Word. Amen? But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. If you don't have these things, you're blind and have gotten uh, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So what does he do? He turns around and goes right back into the old sins. God help us. And so i got to move on. I know. I'm running out of time. And so if, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, he gives us something that we need to know. Confession is not a bad thing. Confession may make us feel bad. We might not never like to say we're wrong, but with, with God, it's an absolute must. <laughs> you believe that? Right. You better believe it because this is the scripture. Right. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to what? Cleanse yes. us. In other words, He wipes away that darkness that's come upon you. And you're light again. You're light again. I see it in my brain. I know I'm, I probably don't see it right. But what I see in my brain is you're walking along in, in his light, you're doing good, and you're singing. And there's a shadow that appears. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you can you can keep walking with that shadow. And then you're going to continue to sin because you've broken something with God. Because the Bible says sin separates us from Him. Is that a lie? No. Sin makes us unclean before Him. He ain't going to use you dirty. Now, I can pick up Tom Tom and the next time he does that I'm going to bring him to church <laughs> for an illustration to y'all. And you reach down there and pick him up and say, oh, let's see a little bit. Woo! We want to live for God that way. And he says, don't. You know what? I told somebody this the other day. Don't run from God. Don't go hide from God. When you know you sin, how do you know you sin? Because the Holy Ghost that's in you, the thing that gives you the light, will tell you when you have sinned. You will feel guilt. You will feel conviction. As soon as you feel that, run to God. You don't run away from Him like everybody's doing. Run to Him. And call on His name. Fall down before Him. He said so we confess our sins. And when we do that, guess what? That shadow is taken away. That darkness is gone, and we are right smack dab in the middle of the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and filled with His Spirit and become clean and usable Amen. for our God. Yes. Confession. One of the beautiful things I tell people, how's your church going? You know what I brag about more than anything else? It ain't about how many people here. It's about how many people come here. Because I know that's where this takes place. Amen. That's between you and God. And he says, so we, he said, I'm faithful and I'm just to, to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, <laughs> we make him a liar. Amen. You know what? Just because you say you have sinned, don't mean you have Praise God. Now listen. This, this ain't a game we're playing. In this world today that we live in that is so full of darkness. Let me read you this and we'll close. This, I didn't write this. I copied this and thought somebody else wrote it. It says, consequences of sin, a broken relationship with God, a broken image of oneself, which brings low self-esteem and an inferiority complex and a broken view of the world. Sounds pretty right. 
God help us, I did, I did write this, to realize that confession is designed by God so we can wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus Christ and continue to walk in the light as he is in the light. We just stand. I don't know what's in your heart and in your mind, but He does. In your queue, come. That's what that's his call today. The law to grow. And to Him, from Him, goes come. When you feel that, and you you know what? When you, a lot of times when I'm preaching this stuff, I can almost tell see, people are seeing things in their mind that I'm talking about. That is what God has placed in you through the Holy Spirit. He's revealing these things. You come and fix this. Amen. You can't. You don't get to gossip about people. You don't get to talk about people behind their back, stab them in the back. You don't get to do those things. Amen. You don't get to tell everybody in the world you're, they're stupid. I mean, come on, y'all. We're in the light. Do you ever see where Jesus did that? You know what? The only ones Jesus ever got ugly to were the people who were preaching lies, teaching lies, teaching falsehoods, denying the work of God, telling him he was not the Messiah when he knew he was. He was rough on them people. You know what? He's going to be rough on people who say, I'm a Christian, and they live in darkness. And one day when they stand before him, when it's going to be too late to change, he's going to say, I don't even know who you are. But Lord, we did this. And Lord, we, we did that. And he's going to say, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Listen to me. He ain't going to get pleasure in doing that. None at all. And he wants you today to purge yourself of your sin. Confess it to Him. Cleanse yourself of your unrighteousness before Him. And let His blood cleanse you. Y'all listen, it ain't no shame in coming to the Lord. It ain't no shame in running to the Lord. It ain't no shame in admitting to Him that He's greater than you are. And that you have done something wrong. And He don't beat you up with a belt. He don't take His belt away out of you. You told me that one. No. That ain't what he says he'll do. He said, I want to wash you in my son's blood. I want to put you back in the line. And I want to give you fellowship again with me and the other believers. That sounds like a wonderful God, doesn't it? An awesome God, a spectacular God. He is all of those things to us. And I'm so glad he made a way. Because there's some people that believe that if you sin after you're saved, you get lost again. Why, if that's the case, why do we need confession to heal it? He always got a way. He's always got a plan. And every time we read something like this in the Scripture, there's one idea in mind with God, and that's to bring you closer to Himself. Amen. To bring you closer to Himself, not to... Not to make you feel awful, not to make you look bad before people, but to reconcile you back to Himself. How does He do that? Through His Son, Jesus. He uses His blood to do that. What a wonderful God we serve. God didn't eat with Him. I didn't watch Him sin. I didn't watch Him die. But I tell you what, He's still my God. And I still believe everything that this word says. And I pray for people who get it very wrong and teach others, oh, you can live in darkness. You don't need to live in light. He understands you're a sinner. Yes, he does. But he made a way for you to not remain in that sin. So use it, claim it, and get the joy 
Thank you for being here today. Don't forget we have a uh, service tonight, five o'clock. We have a business meeting to meet the following service. So if you want to come be a part of that business, come on, be, be a part of it. Uh, love to see you tonight for our study in Matthew. And uh, we're going to immediately at the end of the service, we're going to take up a love offering for uh, for Sister Sarah Godwin. And if you if you want to write her a check, put it in her name and, and give it to her. And uh, God bless you, those that can give, those that can't. God knows your heart, knows who you are, knows whether you're able or not. And so we're, this is just to help her to offset the expenses that she encountered uh, the week her daughter was almost killed on a motorcycle. And she had to go to uh, uh, Round Rock and, and stay for that week or 10 days, however long she was down there in hotels, food. And, and, and all of y'all who, uh, who live on fixed income know what a, well, I to let rock the boat, amen? So, because uh, uh, we love her, uh, this is like, what we call this love offering. If you can give fine, if you don't, that's okay too. I love y'all. Amen. Yes. Uh, Brother Jerry Berry, would you dismiss our service, please? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father, and we thank you for the opportunity to be here to hear your word <coughs> preached by Pastor Gary. And Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you, you uh, extend on each one of us every day. And Father, we pray for those that are in need, and we pray that uh, we can help them in whatever way we can. And we just pray that you'll watch over each and every one of those here today as they continue forward today. And bless them, and let us keep you in the forefront of our thoughts and our minds at all time, Lord. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.